want to welcome you to our Wednesday night Bible study. And we're continuing in the series on marriage. Um, and so today our topic is, are we equal? So we're going to kind of pick up where we left off last week and we're going to keep building from there. So we're going to have a word of prayer and then we are going to get started. God, we thank you for this opportunity to come and be in your presence. We thank you uh, for teaching us and helping us to continue to grow and learn, um, whether we are married or thinking of marriage or just to understand better about ourselves um, so that we are able to move and do the things that you have for us. So, Father, we just give you the praise in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Um, could you send the link in the um, group? Uh, give us one moment. So I forgot Tiffany's not getting her emails. Okay. All right. Just give us a moment. A couple of taking care of a couple of things, and then we're going to get started. So again, we're going to be addressing roles in marriage, but from a different perspective, I believe. Cool. All right. So we're going to do a quick recap. So we talked about Genesis three. Um, go to the next. We um, we talked about Genesis three. And in that one, we kind of talked about some of the things that we saw. One was that sin brought curse to relationships. So there became this blame. Remember, no accountability. We saw that in Genesis three. 11 to 13. And so because of this, uh, because of the curse that happened in terms of relationships um, being broken, there was a loss of transparency and unity. We saw that even kind of when it was like, hey, it was the woman that you gave me that made me do this. So they were casting um, blame and not really uh, holding or taking accountability for themselves. And another point, Eve lost her equality with Adam because in the beginning, um, they were they were they were both called um, them together. They were as a unit in the in the way that God ordained it. But then later on, after after the sin, um, Eve lost her equality with Adam and was called Eve. Yeah, and and then Adam, you know. One of the, the curse that we heard is that really it would be difficult. So he would find some struggle in his ability to provide for his family because it's Genesis 3 and 17. It said that he would have to work um, the, the land. He would have to, you know, toil to make sure that the land um, was, that he was able to get, ooh, so it took out one of the things. The stuff is coming out all at the same time. That must be the wrong one, but we're going to work it out. Amen. All right, so the other thing we talked about on last week was what our hindrances were. You know, we shared how we both came to our marriage marred and unable to be united and as transparent as we needed to be. And because of that, um, we had some issues. I, I shared a little bit, um, just a little bit of a recap I shared in terms of how I came marred with this, um, you know, fears and abandonment issues and rejection issues. So that's how I came to the relationship. So I came hindered. And then Pastor James as well, he came um, hindered. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, not not having integrity, uh, cheating, uh, uh, substance use, and, which, you know, there's a whole lot of just simple behavior and, and really brokenness that, that separated me from, from the Lord and, uh, and ultimately, you know, 
created breaks uh, within the marriage to you know, my That's situations. Yeah. And so if you missed last week, I would I would encourage you to go back to last week's and just going back and look at it because we gave a little bit more detail. And so we're kind of picking up from there. And so as we come into this week and next week, you know, we kind of laid all of the the bareness. We kind of opened it all up. But this week we're shifting. And, and then next week we're kind of really talking about how our relationship with Christ moves from um, living under this curse, right, to being able to then walk in the fullness of what God has for us. So well, let's read, the, we're going to read Ephesians 5, um, 21 through 33. It's, it's a lengthy piece of scripture, but we're going to, we're going to read it. Um, we'll, we'll start off there. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Um, and further, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. For wives, this means, means submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For a husband is the head of his wife, as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of his body, the church. As the church submits to Christ, so you wives should submit to your husbands in everything. For husbands, this means love your wives, just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church, without a spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands are, husbands are to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. No one hates his own body, but feeds and cares for it, just as Christ cares for the church. And we are members of his body. Finally, as the scriptures say, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. This is a great mystery, but is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. So again, I say, each man must leave his wife as he loves love, love his wife. <laughs> Amen. Love his wife. We don't doubt on that. As he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. And I just wanted to also just give that that 21st verse from uh, Ephesians 5, 21. I want to give it from the message because that's kind of where we're going to start from. And it says, out of respect for Christ, be uh, courteously reverent to one another. And so the word submit has several meanings. Um, I'm not even going to try to say what it is, the Greek, but it has several meanings. Um, one is kind of this being subject, other uh uh, being uh, being willing to be put under, subject to control, submitting. That's where we get the submit from. But it has a lot of different um, meanings to it. And so I, I think it's important for us to understand people often, often skip over this verse, right, 21 and jump down to 22. And they tend to use it to say, hey, look, you women, you to be subject, put under or under the control of your husband then it is partnered with the verse in Genesis where God released the curse. Now, I want us to remember that this was a curse. All of that that we gave you earlier was a curse, right? Because of sin and disobedience. And so many times they want to say, you are supposed to be, you know, under your husband. But we take that to kind of mean something a little different than I think what God is. But but again, that was a, a curse that was that that. Um, was broken when Christ died for us. So we are no longer to see marriage as being unequal in our identities in our marriage. While we may carry um, different responsibilities, we're still equal in this marriage. And even in that last part of the scripture, right, where it talks about how God is one. So we are to also see ourselves as one. We're unique in our identities and roles, yet we're equal in the essence of who God is, right? Um, and so I'm not, a, and so don't hear me as saying, I'm saying that women aren't to submit to their husband. No, that's what the scripture said. But but guess what else it said? It said husband and wives should submit to one another. And so we're going to break that down a little bit and, and look into that and look at what does that actually mean. Amen. So really what sticks out to me in this scripture is, courteously 
reference. Yeah. In other words, respectfully listening for understanding and deep consideration for the other person's perspective, mm -hmm. even when it seems illogical <laughs> to us mm -hmm. or me mm -hmm. or unfamiliar or counter to like my own beliefs. Yeah. And, and this is the hard part without quickly judging it because we have our own perspective, our own belief set and frame of reference. And when we hear something that's opposite or different than that, then our, our, our mind can quickly move to the judgment space. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is that's not where it needs to go. It needs to be courteously reverent, respectfully listening for understanding because that might not come quickly. And with the Lord's help, it will come mm -hmm. over time. I'm a witness to that. And, and so that way there's this there's this balance, that, that level of quality. Um, you know, sometimes what the other person is saying takes time to sink in and become clear. Sometimes they may have used words that trigger you. Yeah. And sometimes people have a hard time expressing deep feelings and what is really actually going on in their feelings and their thought process. I know sometimes I struggle with that. Mm -hmm. And so by me struggling with that, that can be, you know, triggering or, or, or make unclear. And so all of this to say, I think we need to extend a healthy amount of grace as we have been extended grace. Amen. I, I see, see I see a hand. You got a question. You can come off mute. I do. Hello, everyone. Hello, apostles. Okay, so I have um I have a question. So, do you recommend in the dating process? And you know, we want to cover everything because we don't want any surprises. But that's not life. Do you ask? You know, how do you argue? Are you like you know? Are you a scrap scrapper? Because some people used to scrap in the street, and some of us are more meek and mild. And it's like, don't rip me to shreds. <laughs> And you Is know what? A way to question that or to get a feel of that. So I think that's a really excellent question. I think part of what you look at, because you know, we kind of in the like even in dating, you could be in that honeymoon phase of dating, right? Everything, oh, he looks attractive, she looks mm -hmm. good, and everything as well. Sometimes you have to see how do you deal when there is a conflict um are they a runner meaning do they emotionally run or not willing to really deal with some things um and how willing are they to being kind of in that place of being transparent so you have to really do kind of some due diligence because that stuff doesn't just change when you get married it uh, that comes with them so if they're not willing to be able to have dialogue even if it's uncomfortable then that's some kind of red flags because one of the things when I talk about this being submitted, um, what I like how God said is that it's it's us being willing to say we're going to obey God's instructions on how to love each other and how to be a family. So what that looks like in dating is we're going to come together and say we believe that this is a relationship, you know, God wants us to be in. So then I got to be willing to hear take time, uh, even if we don't both come to the same agreement, we still got to be willing to respect the difference because Pastor James doesn't, we don't always agree 100%. Do we always agree? We don't always agree 100% on stuff. But what happens is I've learned and he learned and we continue to learn, there are going to be times where his, his view is just going to be different from mine. And different doesn't mean necessarily better or worse it just means different so then how are we going to respect that and so a lot of that really just has to be with somebody that's really willing to have conversation i hope that answered you got some hey, yes amen um i i i think yes to answer your question directly i think you it, 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 i think it's helpful to ask a lot of open-ended questions around okay what people struggle with what and how do you handle, you know, as, as you can ask people to, you know, share with me how, how you ha how you handle some conflict either in the family or, or, or with, with people that are not part of your family, just to get an idea of how people articulate 
get on I, I call it getting on the record <laughs> around how they how they how they engage in different situations. And I think it's good to get in different situations in that dating time um, so that you can see and and really and really hear from people and see how they how how what they articulate shows up in behavior. Yeah. So it's one thing for me to say, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm easy going. I don't nothing nothing really bothers me, et cetera, et cetera. But when you see, yeah, me go from five to you know go to go to ten <laughs> like that, right? Now you have now you have some evidence, and you can kind of determine whether or not individuals what they articulate. But you have to ask those questions. I would ask those open ended questions around how, man, how do you have how have you dealt with some really challenging situations? You know, or what's the what's some of the hardest things you've had to deal with and just be quiet and listen. Yeah. Kind of see how people articulate that. And then you have an opportunity to see um, whether or not there's um, integrity <laughs> around what they say and what they do while you're interacting in different in different scenarios. Yeah. And, and just to add to that, you know, kind of what what crossed my mind is don't don't feel bad like you, you know, because sometimes people are like, well, this feels like an interview. Well, the truth is you are kind of interviewing a future partner. You need to kind of make sure <laughs> that you are that it, it it's fitting the way that God is showing you. And you're not going to know unless you ask enough questions, unless you. Um, and I like what Pastor James was saying is not only ask the questions because we can say a thing because that's what we think, but then what's our actual lived reality? So how do you see them with with their with their friends? How do they respond with um, you know their family? So what are, what is what are they like in it with the you know in these different environments when things happen? So I think that's that's also helpful. Did somebody else have another question? No. Okay. All right. So we're going to keep going. And if you have any questions, please raise your hand. Let us know. Yeah. We, yeah. I had changed it. I'm not sure. But anyway, no, no, no. Yeah. So we're going to talk about the, the wife role and we're going to go, we're going back to that scripture, Ephesians 5, 22 and 24. Um, but I want to read this part down in the message because we read it in the new living trend. So the message says, Wives, understand and support your husband in ways that show you your support for Christ. The husband provides leadership to his wife the way Christ does to his church, not by domineering, but by cherishing. So just as the church submitted to Christ as he exercised such leadership, wives should like, likewise submit to their husbands. So I got excited about this scripture because, and I'm going to tell you why. So the instruction for the wife to be submitted to her husband which again, when we look at the message, that means she's willing to support his decisions out of a reverence for Christ. So because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, I'm married. So I am supporting the decisions out of a reverence for Christ. So this is the submission that we got to look at that's different than this. You're less than that. I'm not less than than him. I am doing this because this is what God is requiring. But there's some reasons why. So this is the part I believe that many miss what she is submitting to. Right. If you look at this scripture, she's submitting to a certain type of husband. Now, can I just say this? Can I, is it OK if I say this? Because I've had so many men come to me and say, you're supposed to be submissive. And you know what I tell them? You're not my husband. That says women submit to their husband, to their own husband. You're not my husband. That don't mean I have to submit to every man simply because you a man. So we got to stop mishandling scriptures. So I've had to tell folks, no, no, this is my husband, this one right over here. And if he didn't tell me I had to do that, I'm gonna need you to go on somewhere. So let's look at some of the things that the scripture shows us. First of all, you can go to the next one. First of all, it says a wife submits to a husband who leads his house like Christ leads the church. So Christ gave himself for the church to be established. He is that man of leadership. He is in that leadership role. So then that means if this husband that I am then following, he's a man of leadership. So Christ died for the church. Therefore, he has the right to lead the church his way. A husband has to be willing to die for his family. He, he has to be willing to establish himself under God 
to be the right kind of leader for his family. So the question really then to the man is, what you dying to? Okay, I'm going to keep it moving. But the scripture says he, the husband, is exercising this godly leadership, then I should be willing to submit. Therefore, I support his leadership by interceding for him, respecting him, because the scripture also said respect him. I respect him before others. I respect him in private. I respect him before my children. Um, and I will not disrespect who he is. I'm willing to support him, his leading leadership over our family, because why? He's doing it God's way. And if I don't, I got to answer to what God is calling for me to do. The other thing is a wife submits to a husband who teaches his family God's truth, right? So Christ taught and lived the truth as he established the church. So to those that came, he was he was showing that. To those, uh, his disciples, he was showing them. So that means I'm submitted and supporting a man who's willing to teach our family God's truth by an example. How he lives, by reading his word by being leading us in prayer. So I'm not trying to be funny. That's a man that I'm, I want to submit to, right? And so the last thing that I had was a wife submits to a man who is compassionate and not a bully because that's part of what the scripture said. So Christ saw the people and had compassion on them. He spent time in prayer for the sick. He talked, he poured into his disciples. He corrected them when they needed to. Therefore, as a wife, I'm willing to submit and support and respect a man who's willing to show compassion to me, to my children, and to others. And he's also willing to pour into those God has ordained him to be a father to, whether it's spiritually or naturally. And so I'm willing to even hear if he's got to correct me when I've done something wrong. Why? Because I know he has my best interests at heart. Amen. Uh, for me, it really just boils down to um, a wife who who respects, who um, understands and gives gives grace. So, like respecting uh, my role as a husband, trying to understand my approach and my nature, even when it's different, and and providing a healthy or I, I cannot say a healthy amount of grace because I'm. I'm imperfect and I make mistakes and I don't get it right all the time. So I need that that grace, hopefully, you know, so that the Lord will shape and mold me into the husband who is modeling, is an example, is leading, you know, leading um, the family as as Christ led led the church. But those are the, like the core things, you know, respect, understanding, and grace. If those are are are, are part of the the, the relationship. Uh, I think th th those are the ingredients that make it great and, and make it stronger over time because God is going to work on both of us as long as we do it his way. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that was the thing, like, you know, Joy even said, men see respect in so many ways. And to be honest, that's part of your role as a wife to learn that language about your husband. What does respect look like to him? Um, so I'm going to just tell on myself. So we talked about what hindered, right? And because I had a lot of issues coming into the marriage myself, because I was one of those that that had been abandoned, because I had been on my own since I was, you know, on on my own since I was fourteen, I had not had a, a, a I hadn't really had an ability to really kind of trust that people were going to be there for me, um, and so a lot of that spilled over onto Pastor James. And one of the things was if I didn't feel safe, oh my God, I was a screamer, Jesus. Thank the Lord. Oh, I know, I know, I, I know Pastor James is like, Lord, thank you for blessing my wife to stop being a screamer. I mean, I used to scream and yell so loud till my throat, I mean, my, just the veins. But a lot of that was simply because of my brokenness. And I remember when I actually, the day I stopped screaming, it, it scared my kids because I came in and I screamed and I heard Holy Spirit say, is that working for you? And I said, no. He said, stop. I looked at my kids. I said, I'm not screaming no more. And I never yelled at anybody after that. They said, then I scared them because then it was like, okay, what's going on? Mama done stop screaming. But I didn't realize, but when I would snap on them, you know, like for instance, I'll give another example. I'm just going to tell them myself. It's okay. I'll tell them myself. We were in the store. We were in the store and my husband is just such a, he's such a, a thoughtful person. But, you know, I'm in the store. I'm ready to get out of the store. I wasn't thinking about nobody. 
So it was some lady, I don't even remember, he let her go in front of us. I was like, I didn't, but see, I didn't realize the transaction. And I was like, how did lady get in front of us? And he, you know, he was like, you know, I let her go. I think, I, I don't know what I said, but it probably wasn't right. But I kind of snapped on him in the store. And it was really disrespectful because I did not stop and take consideration of him, right? And so those are the things, you know, when we talk about what is my role, how do I be respectful? Yeah, I got to deal with my stuff because if I don't deal with my stuff right, then I won't be able. There's no way that I could then be this wife that God is calling to be submitted, even though, man, we're submitted one to another, but I can't come in and say, I'm willing to make these adjustments on how we we function if I'm not dealing with who I am. Oh, I'm so glad. Praise the Lord. He done changed me. <laughs> I know. See, look, I tell y'all, we take Pastor James and I take absolutely no credit God. whatsoever for us being together. We was two broken up people that he said, no, I want you together because I have a destiny for you. So even when either one of us wanted to quit, we could because he said so. And, and I'm so glad that we listened to him. Amen? Amen. So that's the wife role. Amen. So, oh, now we got the tall order. Okay. Now we go to the husband's role. Ephesians 5.20. Now, if y'all know this, it's a much more scripture. So Ephesians 5.25 and 33. Um, we've already read it, but I want Pastor James to read that message part. Um, it might be the next. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Husbands, go all out in your love for your wives exactly as Christ did for the church. A love marked by giving, not getting. Christ's love makes the church whole. His words evoke her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring the best out of her, dressing her in dazzling white silk, radiant with holiness. And that is how husbands ought to love their wives. They're really doing themselves a favor since they're already one in marriage. Come on, somebody. That 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 right there. Okay, I'm sorry. Let, no, let, me, let me no, let me let you go on and give your points. Come on, that that what I said. Come on, y'all. Oh, this is a tall order. And so what I what what the Lord impressed upon me is that I have to love according to knowledge. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Let me get it together. I have to love according to knowledge. Let me just put all this Yeah, because they, they, yeah. they went out of order. Yep, there we go. Okay. I have to love according to knowledge. And that's the knowledge of my wife, not what I think I want all the time. That's not how Christ did it. He sacrificed for the church. And so I need to sacrifice for my wife and love her according to knowledge. Care for her as, as God cares for us both, kind of spiritually and physically. Um, provide, provide to the best of my ability, adore her, and speak life into her and our family because that's part of what God allowed us to create, just as Christ did for the church. You know, I should aspire to do for my wife and my family. So that's like the big piece. And then um, the other piece is being considerate, as I touched on before, being considerate and and living a a, 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 a a submitted life. So I try to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, my, my role is to submit my life to the Lord, his will and his way and his leading, because then that gives me the ability to lead and guide my household. Um, it really calls for a lot of, as I indicated before, a lot of patient consideration. And then finally, I have to be fiercely, fiercely loyal and protective, loyal to the Lord who empowers me to be a husband, to lead, and then loyal to, to my family and, and, and fiercely protective of them, both spiritually and physically. Because when, when I was just out, you know, before I got saved, it was all about, look, it's just money and physical. I didn't have that spiritual mindset, but that was the piece that, where God had to grow me into that space because... Without God growing me to be 
the head and to be connected to him spiritually, all I would think about was, you know, what I want um, and that I'm physically and monetarily taking care because the world is just saying, yeah, just, it's just money and you, and you protect them, but that's not enough. God is calling us to an entirely higher, higher standard. And, and, and I tell on myself because before I got my, before the Lord kind of got me in order, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to be out. I'm going to go do my thing. I'm going to send money. I'm going to pop in whenever I want to. Apostle Jewel was like, no, you ain't. And the Lord was like, no, you ain't. <laughs> and so just like, it was like, it, it was a, it was a, a two and a half, three day period where I was out. But that being out was like death. And so I was like, life is what I need. And God gave me an opportunity to come back and it was received and healed. And that's been a journey of, mm -hmm. of growth adding that spiritual aspect to it because it's not all about money and physical aspect. If the spirit has to come first and then the then the physical and then the then the, the provision, all that follows because God is on is 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 first. Amen. And so the other thing, you know, he talked about that being loving. Um, but what I appreciate about the scripture, the word love used when it talks about the husband, it's not that physical love. It's that um, it's talking about that unselfish love that does what's right because it's the right thing with no expectation of return. So part of the husband's love for his wife is in how he protects her. The scripture said in, in the message that his works invoked her beauty. In other words, how he speak to her. So how you speak to her, encourage her to bring her best self to the marriage. Um, what was kind of cute to me as I was reading, it says, your words are designed to make her dazzle. And I thought about it. You make me blush. <laughs> you make me blush. Think about it. You know, what's more flattering than your mate um, appreciating who you are? Um, not just, you know, when you're fully made up, but they just think you're beautiful at all times. Sometimes you're like, where you can, can you see you got glasses on? But, you know, but that's the kind of love that um feeds you feeds your soul right and so the word says that you are doing yourself a favor by showing um what with this right attitude and then the other thing is it the scripture shows a husband he must be considerate right christ willingly suffered for us so he considers he considered what we needed the word for making her old holy also means to honor or regarding something as holy so when the husband treats his wife like Christ, he is regarding her as holy to God. He's regarding his marriage, his wife, their relationship. He's regarding that as something sacred uh, and it's something sacred to God. And it's also mean then he's not going to squander it because uh, the marriage is something that has that should be set aside um, to please God. And then it pleases us. Um, and I believe as I was thinking, I was like, man, this is what needs to be taught to folks in marriage before they get married, because we kind of got this thing around uh, marriage, just this list of this, that, and the other. Um, but when I started reading just what the man brought, I was like, I was actually almost in tears. I was like, wow, this this is really, you know, an, a, a unique bond. And the thing is, we can't do this. Hello. Let me just, this is undoable in you. It's got to be God. This is a God-ordained type of relationship building. I think you can also, so we talk about like our experience in the marriage thing. Um, how, you know, this is why just that is, is Christ builds the church. Well, thank you for that question. Um, I think, I think that, that's a, 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 it's a prayer assignment and a modeling assignment. And actually, Apostle Jewel can probably talk, speak to this because it goes both ways. Um, if, if Because I wasn't saved, I wasn't saved and, and, and she prayed. And, and I think, so I'll let her answer that before I get to the other point, just to answer you directly. Um, uh, sister, sister Joy. Um, and I was trying to look. Um, okay, so in Ephesians 25, when it talks about that's verse 26, and that's why I wanted the 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 
the that's why I read the message version because it's it's also really about that invoking her beauty, right? And part of that is in what what Pastor Jay was saying, how you view her, how you hold her. So it's not that he's cleansing me from sin. Christ, he's using an example. Christ gave himself for the church so that the church could be cleansed, right? So we could be whole. A husband then is willing to give himself so that his wife is also in right standing. Um, he don't save her. So that that's the part. It's, it's not about him saying, but it's this example of what Christ was willing to do so that the church could be whole. What is the husband willing to do to make sure that his family is whole, his, his wife is secure? Um, and even what Pastor James was talking about, um, it's another scripture where it talks about, you know, when it, it when and I, I don't remember the exact scripture, but I'm paraphrasing when it talks about how, you know, should you put a spouse away if they're not saved? And the scripture says, no, unless the spouse wants to leave. And so it was kind of in that regard. I got saved early on in our marriage. Like when we first got married, we weren't, neither one of us was saved. I was, remember I told y'all, I kind of was a, I was kind of saved. I went to church. I wasn't really <laughs> saved. I was kind of saved. It wasn't until we got married that then I really got saved. And so for almost 20 years, I was saved. Pastor Jane wasn't. Um, and he shared some of the stuff he was doing. I kind of got talked about quite often, like I wouldn't put up with this and I wouldn't put up with that. But see, don't tell me what you won't put up with if God tells you to put up with something, if God tells you to do stuff. And so I gave, God told me to continue to pray for him, to pray for him and to continue to do what God told me to do. And that is what I did. And, and so when he got saved, as they say, I mean, he got saved. Y'all, can I tell you this, this Pastor James, y'all see, is nothing like Pastor James of over 20 years ago. But I'm not the same either. Um, and so, you know, that is really what I believe kind of helped. So I hope that yeah. kind of answered that for you. And I will and I will add, um, uh, Sister Joy, that the my my prayers, you know, I just want to give you that background, but my prayers, the way I the way I, you know, ask the Lord to to bless. Um, Apostle Jewel, and then my 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 day to day behaviors are the things that it's like it's like you it's like you want to continue to be light and you want to continue to be life. Those are the things that help dispel the darkness. When you because I think about darkness as being kind of the dirty stuff or the issues or the things that are trying to distract you from being who God has called for you to be. So the more light you I can bring to the space the 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 more that helps to use your terms to kind of cleanse but again I'm not saving her I don't have that power that's only Jesus and the Holy Spirit but in terms of bringing light you know both right attitude you know right behaviors and prayers even when I'm not in her space I'm praying all the time for her and the family and you and that 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 to me is 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 how um a husband can can to use your term kind of cleanse his wife or to help foster the life and the light that God wants to have in all of us. Yeah. Um, and the point I was going to make before you asked that question, but I wanted to prioritize your question before I come up with this other point was that you can still see, you should be able to look for and see these types of things in individuals, even before you get married, because mm -hmm. you're looking for, what will they sacrifice for? Mm -hmm. How do they treat both family, friend, and foe? How mm -hmm. do they deal with things that are contrary and difficult and challenging? You want to see how they respond to those things because that gives you a clue. Because if you get together, you're going to have conflict. Yeah. If you're living and breathing, you will have conflict. And so you want to see how they handle those types of things, trials challenges and and not just be looking for man i just want everything to be all good i'm gonna I'm, I'm, I'm I'm play everything close to the best i'm not gonna really reveal that you know i got issues too you know so be willing to share so that you can understand how individuals respond to different situations both the good the bad and and i should say 
sometimes they are ugly situations, but you want to know how people deal with that because if you're together, those situations are going to come up and you want a clue about how you can handle those together with the Lord's lead. Yeah, because you want to be able to handle crucial conversations. You know, we can talk about, you know, what's on the menu and we can talk about, you know, what happened on the TV show. That's all surface stuff. What crucial conversations can we have that are going to make a difference for us tomorrow? What crucial conversations are we going to have that are going to help us? And and sometimes even as you go through and we've shared and been really transparent that, you know, we had a lot of brokenness, but we had to both be willing to 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 do the work. We had to be willing to forgive. But we also had to be willing to do our own personal work and then our work together. I could tell you this, there were things even in my life that were because they were broken. There were times when the Lord was like, okay, y'all two come together and pray. There were things that I didn't realize. We talk about deliverance. It's not, I'm gonna tell you, it's nothing more beautiful than a husband or wife that God can use to pray for you and take you through deliverance. Because there were some things that, and sometimes deliverance is even stuff that they may have caused, right? But his willingness to come and the Lord say, now you go pray for her, you apologize for some things, and we're going to break some stuff. And to just, I mean, be in a place where, oh, gee, where the Lord just broke some stuff and, and then to be able to securely just kind of climb, climb up in his lap, <laughs> ball myself up in his lap and just weep and get that refreshing that I need. Um, I mean, to me, that's some of the most beautiful uh, things. So when you talk about like, even to talk about that, when going back to what Joy said about cleansing, in that sense, God used him in that regard to actually cleanse me of some old hurts, right? To cleanse out, clean out some areas in my life some at his hand, some at other people's hand, but God still used him for that. And I think that's so key that we got to be willing to see who we are married to. We're not perfect people, but God is continually perfecting us. Amen. Um, so our final question really to sum up this lesson was, are we equal? Absolutely. Yes. We are equally important to the plans that God has for us as a kingdom family. Um, we're equally to be submitted to one another. So this is not a, I'm subservient as a wife. No, I'm still his equal. That's what God restored, right? When, we, when he said, where are you, Adam? I mean, he called them Adam. They were one. So we're back at one. That's even what the scripture said. He said, hey, this... this why would you do this to your own body? So you are one. So we are equally to submit to one another. And we each have unique roles to supporting and building our family, but no role is less important um, than the next one. And it all depends on a marriage. So what we consider roles for our marriage might be different than yours, but that's nobody's business. Can I just say that again? It's nobody's business. Because we have some of these stereotypes. I'm not talking about stereotypes. I'm talking about what roles has God shown you to work in your family. So I'll just use this as an example. Pastor James, even before he got even before he got saved, he wanted me to be at home with our kids. I'm gonna tell you, I was not having it. I was not having it. I did not, I did not want to leave my job. I was making, I thought I was making good money. I was like, I'm not trying to leave no job, no sir, no ma'am, no ham and cheese. Uh-uh. And so the Lord was like, no, you need to leave. And you know what God will do? You don't do it his way. He'll, he'll give you some, op some, some opportunities to find your way where you have to submit. Because I ended up getting sick. And it got I got sick. And it got to the point where I was only well like two days out of the month. Family, I said, okay, Lord, I, I, I hear what you're saying. I'm coming home. So when I came home, I got healed. I had no more sickness. But I realized my coming home was out of fear of abandonment. Now I don't have no money. He's going to abandon me. What, what's going to happen? But that was the roles that God wanted for us. For somebody else, y'all might be equal. Y'all might be equally employed working. Is that wrong? No. If that is what works for your marriage, you do what, what God tells you to do. Right. And who knows? 
Pastor Jewel might uh might be the the breadwinner for these for this season of uh of our life. <laughs> but the things, the three things that stood out to me, because I want to give people the time uh, and and offer opportunities for questions, is one, we complement each other, so it's yes. You know, we complement each other the way God has called for us to complement each other. We consider each other's needs and desires. And the final thing is that we're stronger together. God ordained that we be together and be strong in that way. And so we're stronger together. And that's that's really how I've viewed our um, our marriage, even when I didn't even understand that this is one wife for life, even when I couldn't even fathom, because I, I got married when I was 19. I, I couldn't even have met people that were 30 or 40 years old. I couldn't believe how old they were. I was just, and now, days. right, and now my children are <laughs> somebody okay. years old. So, but I always believed that, and I, you know, that it was like, okay, it's, it's, it's me and you against the world. Not that we fighting, but it's going to be me and you as, as, as a unit. Um, as we go forward and and God grew that into not just the physical financial unit you know that lives in the same space but the spiritual unit that that transcends geography and everything else and makes everything else work amen amen so I hope this blessed you and do anybody have any questions any comments you can come off mute or you can put it in the comment section. And then next week, we'll be finishing up this lesson and we're gonna be kind of taking the part two of this. We talked about are we equal? And then we're gonna talk about marriage, the new covenant way. What what is kind of getting back to what God originally wanted so what does that look like for us um, as new covenant uh, members of the body of Jesus Christ? So any questions or comments? I did uh, have not, a question. Um, yes. Just listening to, so first off, my family and I, we were saying, you know, this is the mature. <laughs> this is a mature approach to marriage. And most people don't have this perspective. So thank God for, for the teaching. And then it has to be applied. But my thoughts were along the lines of um, more like marriage counseling or could I wonder if that could help with some of this just as far as maybe having the same perspective of roles in the family like versus what I do versus what he does, traditional roles or not. Um I can, I, I, you know, we can have that conversation, but the, is a lot of that covered under marriage counseling as well, premarital counseling? And it depends. Sometimes it is, and I believe it should be. And that's why I was like, you know, I really liked this kind of approach because I know from some of the traditional marriage counseling that I've seen, it's kind of been more of that stereotypical you you're just supposed to raise the kids and this that and the other but it's like but if you really look at certain scriptures it talks about a father not angering his child I mean you got to have relationships so it's not just me being the only one raising the kids we have to have this 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 um combination of roles and ideas so I think Marriage counsel, especially from the church perspective, needs to start to include that helping people to have a broader perspective on what roles look like. Um, and it's not out and it's not really out of the parameters of the word. It really is in the word. We just kind of we've gotten to where we cherry pick. So we pick this and then we make a whole doctrine off of it. I'm like, let's roll that back and let's look at the scripture as a whole. Um, and then there are some things that may not say husband changed the diaper, right? But there's some things that, you, this is your child as well. So I really don't like when people say for, about a, a father, you babysit, no, you're not, you watching your kid, that's your child. So these are some things that I think um, takes time for people. Cause some people you have this kind of idea, I'm, I'm just gonna go get the money, but you take care of the kids and you take care of the food and you take, um, but, you have to kind of be willing also to have conversations and say, this is kind of some of my expectation. What's some of your expectation and how are we going to blend this together? 
because we both live in the house. So, you know, we can do things. Now, there are certain things I do more of because I am at home. But that doesn't mean he doesn't do any of those things. So, um, I mean, in fact, our girls, we, our girls, every night, dad was telling them a bed night, a bedtime story. That was that was one of the things he was going to come in and do. Now, poor thing, he would be tired, and uh, I could hear the girls calling, "Ma, dad is making up stuff, but this is not what the story said." I was like, "At least he's in there reading to you." I'd go in there, he sleep, they on his back, and you know. Um, but the point is, even though he was tired, he was still showing up. I'm going to be honest. He went to all games, like all of their games. My kids tried to play every sport. That was not my that was not my ministry. That was his ministry. He went to soccer games. He went to, to all basketball, volleyball, basketball, basketball track. track. He went to all of that. I showed up for dance. And then when they had a bunch of stuff, he would be on one side of the city with one kid. I'd be on the other side of the city with another kid. But one thing is, he even even before he got saved, he was still learning how to invest in his family, and it just got even better when he got saved. And so, um, it's all this this part of a process. But I like that question. I think marital counseling should, um, but even as an individual, you still got to be willing to say, if, even if counseling don't, got to be willing to say, okay, what are your expectations? You know, what are you expecting from a wife? You know, what, what, because, because there are some times I've known of some people, I've kind of asked them that they should ask those questions and they be like, uh-uh, after I ask the question and they start saying, well, I'm the man, I make all of the decisions. You just, you know, my wife got to do what I say, red flag, red flag, hold on, slow down, Jim Shoe. Let's talk about that. What does that mean? Help me out. Let's work on that. So, right, that's a problem. So we need to have these discussions so that you don't want to find yourself in these relationships. Mary, walking down the aisle, and you never even got a chance to, to discover any of that. So, so yeah. So, I, again, I hope this was um, helpful. And, um, again, next week we're just going to kind of continue and in, in, into what the – lessons are and what we've learned uh, about you know just this whole concept of being a we call it team Williams <laughs> but being a couple first and foremost for God right as as believers in Jesus Christ we kind of sometimes don't always put that first but our first mission our first assignment is who how do we show up um for the savior. And I know I, I'll say this before we go into prayer. One of the things that like when, when James first got saved and it's kind of funny when he first got saved, everybody was ready. Oh, let's get you a day. Let's do this. Let's do that. He was like, no, he was like, no, I'm not doing nothing. He said, I have one assignment. What was your son? Take care of my family. He's like, I got to fix some stuff that I, I messed up. At home. That's my, that's my ministry. He's like, I got to fix some stuff that I messed up. This, I got to do this first. He was like, I got to get, make sure my wife is secure. I got to make sure my children are secure before I do anything else. Cause I messed some stuff up. That for me was like, okay, that, that, that said a lot. When you talk about listening to somebody and then that's what he did. He was like, and then we're going to push him. You want to push him to do nothing faster than when he said God was ready for him to move and he still makes sure that I'm number one, them girls, they grown as can be, but they still, if you could see our board in our kitchen, he got, they, they man, he got stuff on the board, but well, how he could take care of his girls. That's just who he is. Um, and so for that, I'm, I'm grateful. So you want that kind of a spouse that really takes that understanding that it is a honor to be, married to somebody right it's an honor that he's my spouse he's honored that i'm his spouse and we have to honor each other because we are a gift that god gave to each other and so we got to work on it it wasn't easy but we had to keep working on it until we started to get it right but i know i'm so easy to love so you know. <laughs> easy as pie <laughs> all right pastor jane let's pray us out so we can 
let everybody and if, again if you missed last week last week go back and watch last week it was really a, a good lesson as well let's all look to the lord father in the name of jesus we thank you lord that we have a mind to turn to you for what we need for what we need to build relationships that are fruitful that honor you and that are are, are edifying and, and strengthening of of a model of um healthy relationships that potentially can lead to healthy marriages that ultimately are, are a reflection of how you have ordained for us to live our lives in relationship under your Holy Spirit, led by your Holy Spirit, shaped and, and molded, um, saved, convicted, and, and strengthened by your Holy Spirit. Lord, I just pray that you would touch each and every person right where they need, Lord. Let your spirit touch them, give them what they need in terms of wisdom, give them what they need in terms of relationships, and give them what they need in terms of support and continued strengthening in their walk as children of God doing your blessed will. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. God bless you all. Good night.